Hello, it's Mary here from the Roof Falcon Studio. I'm putting a face and a voice behind all these emails that you've been receiving all year. Quick little wrap up as we come to the end of 2023. Um, I first sat down to record this short video as a way to say thank you to everybody for supporting me throughout the year. Uh, and as I started talking through it, I realized just how much has been done for the year. So take a little pause. I've written down the top 10 things that have happened in the Roof Rankin Studio this year. This is a little peek behind the scenes of all that goes into building um, an artist brand, creating art, um, marketing it, engaging with audiences. Uh, it's a lot more than just painting. <laughs> I can tell you that much. I just wanted to share with my email subscribers in particular because I know that anyone who has subscribed to this newsletter is genuinely interested in following my artistic journey um, and following how I'm growing as an artist. And so first up, uh, first goal, I think that we can reflect on from this year at the studio is having a studio. <laughs> so I moved into this studio space um, in January and it has been a game changer for me to have a dedicated space. You can see even all the paint splashed on the walls. It's so freeing um, and it's so great to have a spot that it's just for for me to paint um, and it is full to the brim of canvases of paints of colors of uh, experiments gone right and experiments gone wrong uh, which is all part of the fun process so having that dedicated space was a big shift um, and a really exciting one second one then is more of the business side of things a new logo so you may have noticed there's been new typography there's a new logo for roof lankin studio that came out this year i've reflected that in all of my packaging and anything that you would have received since and i've also uh, reflected on goal number three my new website so i built that myself thank you to squarespace <laughs> So I built that website myself. Um, it was a labor of love. It took a lot of time. I wanted to make sure I had the right content. I wanted to make sure when you logged on that it was engaging. There's a YouTube video link there of watching me paint. So it's not just here's my portfolio and how to contact me. I wanted it to be a little bit more engaging than that. So there's videos, there's time lapses of how I create my artwork. Um, in addition to, I guess, a little bit more detail about me, my background, my inspiration, things like that. So new website is another reflection I had this year that I wanted to uh, capture. Number four is my artist network. I, I kind of came out here, I didn't really know anybody. <laughs> I didn't know any other artists. Uh, I didn't know kind of people locally in DC or anything. Now at the end of the year, I can truly say I have a little artist community, which I don't think I realized how important it is to have that. Um, the most prominent one being through the Harvest uh, Artist Group that I joined. So hello, uh, if you're on the mailing list, then you're also in Harvest. <laughs> uh, that really gave me a lot of confidence. It also was such a great sounding board. If I have a new idea or if I want to try something new, I didn't have to do it on my own anymore. I could contact a whole bunch of other artists and say, hey, have you done this before? All those kind of things that I thought I had to figure out for myself. Um, I was able to now build a community of artists who could help me through it and guide me through it. I also attended a lot more art fairs. So I went to two art fairs in DC. I went to Superfine, I went to Umbrella. That was really great for meeting artists, seeing their work, getting inspiration um, and understanding some of the, the business side of, of how the art world works as well. Number five is this email list. Do you know how hard it is to build an email list? It's actually really hard. <laughs> but it was the first thing that all of those artists that I spoke to said that you have to have a, a mailing list. They're going to be your true people who are engaged in your journey. Instagram is great and wonderful, but Instagram kind of becomes a portfolio almost platform like you take a look at the Instagram to see the artist's style but if you have invested in the artist and you want to see their journey or you want to maybe get to know them um, a bit more regularly and a bit more long form content and uh, that's where the email list comes in and thank you all for signing up you only got this video if you signed up to the email list so if you got the email list um, and you've been enjoying it, please do let me know because that has been a big new endeavor for me. I really enjoy doing it. I only really send out um, 
once or twice a month max emails because I don't want it to become something that is bombarding. I only want to reach out when there's an update, when there's news, when there's something to be shared. So hopefully you see the value in that too. But curating an email list is really difficult. I'm really appreciative of all the people who have joined that list and given me their email and have engaged. It really, really makes this a two-way piece as well. Six is commissions. I did a hell of a lot of commissions this year. And with some of the commissions, I was really tested to try new mediums and new forms. Um, I used sculpture for the first time on a canvas, which was very exciting. And added lettering. You can see all the lettering behind, um, which actually some of those pieces ended up being the ones that gain the most traction and garner the most interest as well. So I feel like I've unlocked something within my brand when it comes to the lettering and the words. Uh, really getting to have people willing to invest in me, commission me to do artwork, allow me to be creative, to experiment with all of these mediums. And when I sit down with people, when they do book a commission and I say, OK, what do you want this piece of work to say or what are we trying to capture on this canvas? People are so vulnerable and they are really open to sharing their life experience that they're looking to to capture on this canvas or a value that they have. Um, and they really share a lot with me so that I can really try and represent it through the means of the artwork. That's probably my favorite part of painting is the commissions. Um, so thank you to all of you who have commissioned me this year to do, uh, whether it's big or small, whether it's large canvases or small sketches, it's really my most favorite part of the Rue Franklin studio is having that one-on-one -on -one connect with people and creating bespoke work just for them. Number seven is consignment. I had my first ever consignment in Washington, DC. So it was really great to see my work displayed and to see my work um, up on the walls and have people walking through and walking by. It was also the first time I had to write and draft a consignment contract um, and understand, again, more of the business nuance to the artistic side. Um, so that was a really good learning experience of what it takes to run a consignment, of how the different parties play in that too, and just understanding um, all that goes into it. Number eight is the in-house prints. So I had prints before when I was in Ireland, but the prints um, were done remotely. So if I wanted to take greater control of the print process. And this isn't, I kind of had to chat to people through this on Instagram. This isn't just like you plug in a printer and it's a print. <laughs> these are fine art prints. Like these are really, really high quality professional grade prints. So it took a lot of investigation and work to figure out the best way to do that. That's why I was so excited about the Random Act of Kindness giveaway, because that giveaway um, was kind of my final, my final point where I got to really test my end to end print process. The prints that were used in the Random Act of Kindness giveaway this year, the original artwork was created in my new studio right here where I sit. Uh, the photography for the pieces was taken here as well by me. The editing was done by me. The printing, uh, I got a huge, looking over there because it's over there behind the camera, but I got a huge, huge printer, which is a fine art printer. <laughs> this is not like a paper printer, guys. This is a huge investment in my art business. Um, and I thought naively, I'll just get the big, whizzy, expensive, professional uh, fine art printer and that's it. No, paper is so important. And it took me a lot of experimentation to figure out what was the right uh, paper to use, because my work, as, you, as, as well as you know, and as you can see, super vibrant, super colorful. I didn't want any of that to be dulled by the paper. And there's so many different canvas papers, fine art papers. Uh, do you want to have a glisse? Do you want to have a matte? So there were so many different variables I had to figure out. Um, and I went through that process. It was painstaking. I've never seen so much paper in my life. <laughs> but I found the right paper in the end. Now my prints are a higher quality than they were previously. And they're more affordable for me to do. And I have full control of the creative process end to end. Oh, I think I actually have one beside me. 
There we go. Sorry, I got the ring light on. So you can see how bright that is. I'm so proud of this. <laughs> you can see how bright uh, the colors are. And actually, beautifully, it's a bit darker in the room, but that's the original behind me there. So I was really proud. That's probably my biggest win of the whole year was figuring out that end-to-end -end process. Number nine is exhibitions and inspiration. So I made a lot more effort this year to embrace the fact that I live in a really fantastic city <laughs> with lots of museums and cultural opportunities. Um, I used that for experimentation, for inspiration. Two things I did that really helped. One was I took a whole day off, <laughs> cleared the whole calendar, and I did a gallery crawl, like a pub crawl, but for galleries <laughs> in DC. The second thing I did then, which was a bit more local, is in Washington, D.C., there's a neighborhood called DuPont Circle. And on the first Friday of each month, they do um, a Friday art walk where all the galleries in DuPont Circle open their doors and you can kind of mill around between them. Took advantage of my location. Um, I'm, I love D.C. People always associate D.C. with politics. D.C. has so much more happening than politics. There's a huge, huge, vibrant art scene. Number 10 of the year is two-way engagement. Part of the greatest value of art and the Rue Franken studio is about connecting with people. Why I started all of this was to spark conversation and to spread joy. And I'd like to know, is that conversation being sparked and is the joy being spread? And the only way I'll get to figure that out is if you tell me that you got the message. So if you made it this far in the video, congrats. They're my 10 wins of 2023. There's so much more coming in 2024. So thank you everyone for your support this year. Every little thing that you can do to support me throughout the year is very much appreciated. So this is my way to say a big thank you. I want to be there and baby dance the night away.